Well, good morning. Everybody doing good? Surviving the heat? Barely. We're supposed to get some relief this week. That'll be nice. Glad that you are spending your Sunday morning with us. We, I don't know. Have you seen the sign? We have Jesus and AC. You like that? I, I thought, hey, if, anybody, if anything will draw them in, it's that. Uh, if you are visiting with us this morning, we are especially glad that you're here. Um, there is a blue card in the seat pocket in front of you. I invite you. That's there for you. I invite you to fill that out and let us know you were here. Um, you do not have to do that, but we would love to know you were here and love to know, uh, get to know you better. There, you, if you would, when you, if you fill that out, just leave it in your seat there. Don't put it back in the pocket because sometimes we have trouble seeing those. We, uh, this morning I went into the office and, and we had found another one that had been put in the deal that we would have normally gotten on Monday. So we'll be getting uh, in touch with that person. But uh, just put it in the seat pocket there, or the, uh, put it in the seat as you leave today. Not in the pocket. All right. Turn with me, if you would, to Daniel 3. Daniel 3. It's not often we turn to Daniel, but we're going to Daniel today. Anybody get a chance for my email? Anybody get a chance to read Daniel 3 this weekend? All right, me and you, Jim. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. We'll read some of it today. So we're going to start in, in uh, verse 13, Daniel 3.13. But before we go there, I want to, I want to kind of set this up. Um, there is a king, Nebuchadnezzar, and he's a bad dude, okay? And he, uh, this is kind of just a summary, but uh, there's four, four Jews that are kind of at the center of, of much of the story of, of Daniel. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You've probably heard those names, but uh, we're going to read about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But what has happened, Nebuchadnezzar had, had set up an idol, that, and, he, and he instructed everybody in the kingdom that is, when you hear the music play, you're to hit your knees and worship this idol. And uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and we're going we're gonna to learn about that, they said no, they would not do it. So we pick it up in verse 13. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve uh, my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the z zither, I believe, zith zither, zither, okay. Uh, anybody know how to play one of those? All right. Uh, lyre, harp, pipes, and all kinds of music. If you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, notice it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then, I love the, this, listen to this arrogant statement, then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it, and he will rescue us from your hand, O oh, king. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O oh, king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Can I please hear an amen? Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent in the furnace, so hot, that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's a hot fire. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, O king. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire. Amen. 
I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out. Come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps and prefects and governors and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Amen. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, you remember what, what you do when you see the word therefore? You go back and see what it's there for because of their faithfulness. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble and no other God can save in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the providence, province of Babylon. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit. We want to hear from you. We need to hear from you. Speak in power and authority. Transform our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. So y'all may have heard this story. It reminds me every time I have this kind of a topic, uh, this story, that man was, was, was hiking, he was up on a, a cliff, and he, he falls over the side of the ledge. Y'all heard, anybody heard this story? Falls over the side of the ledge, and he, he grabs a hold of this little bush that's sticking out of the side of the ledge, and he's hanging on for dear life, and, he's, and, and he begins to panic, and he looks down, and, and, and he's got several hundred feet of a drop below him, and he's, and he's clinging to this, uh, this little bush hanging out of the side of the cliff. And he begins to cry. He begins to shout out, Is there anybody up there? In silence. And he, and he hangs on a little while longer. And he says, Is anybody up there? And then after he does that for a little while, he hears a voice. He says, Yes, I'm up here. Help! He says, Just let go of the branch, and I'll save you. He says, who, who are you? I'm the Lord God. Just let go of the branch and I'll save you. And the man hanging on the bush says, Is anybody else up there? <laughs> okay, it's a bad joke. Okay, Robert. I'm... Um, you know, so today's message, four in the furnace. Four in the furnace. You know, uh, we face so many trials in our lives. You know, this life is just not easy, is it? Uh, it it's, I mean, there's joyful times, uh, you know, and, and, and God wants us to be joyful, but there's also struggle. And, and Jesus um, was very straight with us. He said, in this world, you will have trouble. As a matter of fact, and I remember, Scott, um, I want to I pause here for just a second. Scott uh, Farrell just told me, Scott, raise, just wave your hand where everybody knows who you are. Scott, Scott's a police officer in town, and, and uh, one of his fellow workers, a lady named Diane, uh, her husband was killed this morning. Uh, was, uh, she's a young, young family in their 20s, and, and he was driving over to Sweetwater this morning for work and was killed in a car accident, and they, they have children at home. You know, and, it, and if, if we don't understand that this life is difficult, we just, just start talking to people. I want, to, I want to pause for just a moment and, and pray for Diane and her family, if you would do that with me. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we, we don't understand. We don't have all the answers. Um, and we know that this life is hard. But you said that you came to draw near to the brokenhearted. Now, that's why you came, to draw near to the brokenhearted, to, 
to show us how to grieve, to, to be walk with us through this life. And so we ask you to lift up Diane and her, her children and her family and all the friends of, her, of hers and her husband's. God, we don't understand this, but we know that, that you have Diane in the palm of your hand. So draw near to her and bless her. In Jesus' name, amen. We face trials in this life, you know, um, and if you will, furnaces. We have furnaces. Um, today's passage, I, wanna, I just want to make, uh, as I read through this passage, um, I want to make three points that I think God is trying to teach us. First of all, facing the furnace requires faith. I want to talk about that word for just a minute. Um, faith, Hebrews 11 defines faith that uh, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. If we have something, we don't, we don't have to trust that we're going to receive that in faith because we already have it. Faith is trusting that, that you're going to receive it. Certain, it's sure of what you hope for and certain of what you do not see. Now listen, this uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, how they responded uh, the king was very clear. You, you bow down to my idol when the, when the music sounds or you're going in the furnace. And here's how they respond. If, you, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it and he will rescue us from your hand. He, so there's this, this uh, absolute faith that he can and will do it. But listen, it doesn't stop there. They go on to say, but even if he doesn't, faith. Even if he doesn't, we're still not going to bow down and worship your gods. So there's this, this idea that, that facing the furnaces in our life requires faith. And faith is, is not a sure thing. It's trusting in hope that, that God will be there when we need him. And, and here's, the, here's the deal in my own life. You can, you can place your own uh, situation is God has never disappointed me. God, I, I've never expected God to show up, and he didn't show up. Now, there are times where God, I believe, God is, is quiet, and we, we pray, and we think God's not hearing us, and we think God is not answering us, but sometimes God just wants us to lean in. And, and as I get older, I, if I wasn't so vain, I'd have like 19, you know, uh, hearing aids just packed around my head if I wasn't so vain. I, I, I do that all, I find myself doing that all the time, especially at our, at our uh, when we have luncheons here, you know, and you've got all this background. And men, any, any men over 50, say, hey, give me an amen. <laughs> and it's like there's all this background noise and everything, and somebody right across the table from me talking to me, and I have to lean in if I want to hear what they're saying. Sometimes God is, is quiet for a time because he wants us to press in. He wants us to lean in and go, God, now, I'm, I'm really listening now really listening. Facing the furnace in our life requires faith. You know, um, if you've been coming here for very long, you've heard my story. Um, I'm second career ministry um, and spent 20 years in the computer field. And um, I remember uh, I, God had really, he impacted my life in a great way on a walk to Emmaus in 1991. And there was about, and Cheryl knew it within a few months. Cheryl knew that, that God was calling me in the ministry, and she was, at that time, it changed, by the way. At that time, she was going, I'll do anything you want to do, but I ain't going to be a preacher's wife. <laughs> God, God had a way. He worked, on, he worked on her. He got her in a headlock, and he kind of <laughs> scobbed her knob a little bit and worked her over. But, but I didn't, she came to me with that, and I was like, what? I don't even know what you're talking about. But, but a, a year or two later, I began to feel that, that call in my own life. And I remember uh, being in the computer field, I, as people would call me and they would need help with their computer, I'd go and I'd help them with their computer. But in, in essence, I really wanted to minister to them. I, I started finding myself having a heart. It's like, hey, we're going to have a we're gonna have prayer time at noon today over in the chapel. You need to, you need to come and, and be a part of that. And, so I just had that, that pastor's heart even while I was still there. And I remember Cheryl and I had been praying about it. And at that point, she knew uh, what God was calling. She was on board at that time. And um, we both just decided that um, God would show us when. He would show us when. And, you know, I'd built 
20 years, I'd built this career that kind of had some, I thought, had some security in it and everything. And, I, and we just waiting, waiting upon God's timing. And one day, my, the president of our company called me into the office, which was rare. I mean, I hardly ever talked to this gentleman. He called me in the office. He said, Jeff, you're a good employee, and we love having you here, and love for you to be here, but you need to decide if you want to be here or not. And, and, and I guess it was showing. <laughs> I guess it was showing, and he said, "You need to. I want you to take the weekend, talk to your wife, and let me know Monday if you want to be here." So we, I went home and we prayed and we talked, and and we just felt like God was. I, I told her, I said, "I can't go back, and I'll be lying to the man to tell him I want to be there." So God would not put me in a circumstance to have to lie to somebody just because they had a paycheck. So we knew it was the time, and everybody else and thought, except for my mom and dad. My mom and dad were, you probably were freaking out when, you, when I wasn't around, but they, they were supporting me. But um, most people thought we'd lost our mind, but I went back in on Monday and I just said, I, I can't tell you I want to be here because I really don't. So the, I didn't know what the future held, but I knew God held the future. And I knew he, he was calling us to this time. And... and it takes faith to, to step in when, when you don't know what's, what lays in front of you. It takes faith to take that step and to trust. And, you got, and I just knew God, God had, he just was, had been so good to me and my family, and I just trusted him. I just trusted him. Secondly, from this passage today, we can learn that God is always present in the furnace with you. And we, uh, I love, you heard me get emotional as I, as I read that because in my own life, I've been in the furnace and, and, and God's been with me. And I know many of you have, have gone through much more stuff than, than I ever have. But I've been in a few furnaces and I have always had God with me, walking around in the furnace with me. You know, so when, when, I, when I left that computer, the security of that computer career, and there, I'm, I'm thinking, in, in all honesty, I just thought, hey, we're, God said do it, we did it, and these, all these doors are going to start flinging open. But God, he knew that I needed, I needed a little, few, few rough edges chipped off. I still do, by the way. But he knew that he was, he was still molding me. And, and there was a, a couple of years there where th I had some jobs, uh, that ministry jobs, that I, opportunities that I thought were going to happen that kept falling through. And, I, and, man, financially, we're just like going, okay, God, you know, I mean, where are you? And it was really getting crazy. And I was really scared and I was getting angry. And I remember, and I've told you all this before, but uh, we lived a few blocks over here. And I told Cheryl one day I'm going for a jog. And she just, that right there told, you know, I could have told her I'm going to, you know, jump off the two-story building. She wouldn't have been more surprised. I said, I'm, I, I just got to go run. I got to do something. To, I just got to do something. So I started running. And I actually ran right out here on this track. It was at, at night. And I was running on this little walkway path. And I remember I was just scolding God. You, did you know God loves us enough to let us, so we, he lets us scold him? He should have just zapped me right there. <laughs> he should have just squashed me like a bug. But God allowed me to scold him because he loves me. And I'm just like, God, I trusted you. I've put my family at risk. Where are you? And, man, I was just giving it to him. And it was right out here under these trees. And I just felt the presence of God so strongly, and God just spoke to my heart, and he said, Jeff, I'm breaking you. I'm breaking you. I'm, I'm molding you into the man I want you to be. And he said, I want you to know that I'm all you've got. I'm all you've got, but I'm trustworthy. And, and, I, and I remember just saying, okay, God, don't leave anything undone. Finish the job. Don't, don't, don't pull me out of this too soon. I, I want the, the fire to, to do with me what you want to do. And not long after that, some things began to break that I'll tell you. Third thing that we can learn today, today's passage teaches us that time in the furnace 
Endure it in faith. We can all go through furnaces, but we don't always endure them in faith. But endure it in faith produces maturity and fruit. And we saw in this passage today that um, I love that, that um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do you, think, do you think that was an easy thing? We just read over it in scriptures like, oh, yeah, they just said, hey, you know, God will save us. Just chunk us on in there. <laughs> I mean, don't you know that they were scared, scared half to death? But they, they held firm in faith. And, and I'll, don't you know going forward, can you do, how, wouldn't you like to be in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego after the furnace? I mean, nothing like bulletproof veil. Like, like, come on, bring it on. What else you got? My God just saved me from this furnace. It burned up your guys and they didn't even go in it. They're just like putting me in it. Come on, what else you got? Can you just see them doing that? Faith produces faith. I mean, it produces maturity and fruit. And then it changed Nebuchadnezzar. He, he sees this faith of these guys. Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is what he says. This is the guy who just commanding them to, to kneel down. But their faith and God's faithfulness and power Converted Nebuchadnezzar. Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And, and he, he said, they trusted in him, their faith, to defy the king's command, were willing to give up their lives. Therefore, because of the faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and because of the power of the living God that, that saved them from the furnace, Nebuchadnezzar says, therefore... I decree that people of every nation or language who say anything against the God shall be cut in. He had, there was still a little work God had to do on Nebuchadnezzar. He probably doesn't want us cutting people into pieces if they don't bow down and worship. But do you see the, the, the maturity and the fruit that came from the faith of these three men? So, so I'm, I'm, I'm jogging, I, uh, God, I have that encounter with the Lord, and um, not long after that, he provided you guys. And, and I, I want to tell you that as we were worshiping today, Trevor, where you at, Trevor? As we were worshiping today, just I could hardly sing because just... God's faithfulness in, his, in my love for each of you, just, just the joy I have of being here with you and worshiping together. It was just, man, it was just about to floor me. I, could, I couldn't even sing for a little while because I was just feeling so grateful for God's goodness. God said, I'm breaking you because I, I want you to be more like me. And, and, and then he provided... A church, I can remember before I made the transition out of the, the, the uh, computer field that all I wanted to do, I didn't, I really, in all honesty, I'm thinking, man, just, God, just give me, give me 15 or 20 people that I can love on, that I can tell people about Jesus. Just, I just want to tell people what Jesus does and what, who he is and how he loves them. Just, just a handful, God. God can do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. That's what God's word says. Y'all are the answer to, to God's, to my prayer to God. You're, you're his answer to me. There is a purpose in the furnace when we face it. God's, God's doing something. I wish I'd have brought it with me this morning. I forget, what's that little pot called, that Cheryl, that we bought? You remember? It's a, it's a certain kind of pottery. I, I wish I'd have brought it and read up a little bit more on it, but we bought it a few years ago at a couple's retreat, and I bought it because it's symbolic. It's, what they do is they, they take trash and just junk, and they just put it in this, this thing, and they just heat it up, and, and they put some clay in there or whatever, and, it, and, it, and it, literally the pot is made out of junk, and it's the most beautiful little pot you've ever seen. I mean, it's just beautiful, and there's a certain type of pottery. Where's Jordan at? You'll, my Jordan. Ro Roku. Roku, maybe. Anyway, it's a certain type of pottery, but, but it takes junk 
and it makes something beautiful. That's what God wants to do in, in us, and, and the furnace has a purpose. We, we, tend to, um, we tend to run from the furnace, and, and I get that. I, I run as well. But, but God wants to use those times in our lives. The times the significant growth I've had in my life have come through trials. I'm just, I'm, it's not fun. I'm just telling you that's, that's the way it is. If you would, just, just bow your head with me. Father, we are, we are so thankful and so blown away that you would actually be in the furnace with us. You, you could be this God that stands back and just instructs us, and, but you walk with us. And quite frankly, you suffer with us. And we're grateful, we're thankful. Help us to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, this, these, these men that trusted you with all our hearts, even when, when it looked bleak, when things don't look good. Help us be bold and, and be able to stand up for you, not for our self-interest and not, not on you know, always, you know, our world, you know, we're always, Lord, we're worried about, well, I have the right to do this and I have the right to do that. But let us stand up for you, for what's right in you. And let us bring you glory. We love you, God. We're, we're honored that you loved us first. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, this is Pastor Jeff Hatcher with Wiley United Methodist Church in Abilene, Texas. I want to thank you for listening to this, uh, this message from God's Word today. I want to remind you that you have a Savior. His name is Jesus Christ, and He came to set you free. He came to heal the brokenhearted. He did that by hanging on a cross in our place. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to, I want to invite you to do that today. If you want to do that, just pray this prayer with me. Father, uh, I repent of my sins. I confess to you that I am a sinner. I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart, to free me from my sin, to, to be my Savior and my Lord. Uh, help me to be the creation that you have, have created me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer today for the first time, I want to ask you to do four things. First of all, I want to ask you to, to share that decision with a member of the clergy. Let them know that you've made that decision. And secondly, I want, you, want to ask you to be baptized. God's Word says that uh, believers in Jesus Christ, we affirm that and we celebrate that through baptism. And thirdly, I want to ask you to begin to read God's Word, to get into His Word, not just because uh, we think that that makes us good, but because this is the Word of life. And finally, to, to find a Bible-believing and preaching church to be a part of. If you've made that decision, I also welcome uh, a co conversation with you. You can reach me at jhatcher at wileymethodist.org, and I'd be happy to come along your side in that journey. God bless you.